Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors in Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here on this Wednesday morning. We've got a great show lined up, and we'll get started by the weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center. They're at 757, I'm sorry, 767 5500. Uh, Principal Mike Eppenstall, the staff there, are all good folks there. They'll give you uh, some good advice on whatever you might want to get into, okay? The weather is absolutely beautiful in the mornings. Now, it's getting a little bit warm in the afternoon, but high today is going to be about 86, and that's a lot better. Now, that's not, that's not, as, uh, it's not as humid as it has been, and it's, uh, the low tonight now is going to be right at 69, so we're still in the 60s. Water temperature remains around 83 degrees. All right, let's take a look at our river readings. The Apalachicola remains right at a .5. And it chalked a hatchy at Careville as a 5.0. Okay, that, uh, look at it. Look at the chalked hatchy though. It, it's dropping out, and uh, it's going to really be nice. The chalked hatchy should be really nice this weekend to do some serious uh, river fishing over there. Want to set out some trout lines? It's, uh, it's going to be good for that. And also uh, the brim fishing is good. I got a good report uh, a week or two ago uh, before that big rain came in. All right, that takes care of our weather. I want to uh, mention our tide chart. We, we didn't do this yesterday, so Jeff reminded me again, our tide chart. We're looking at our, today would be, I'm sorry, today's Thursday the 13th, and we're looking at a high tide this morning at 8.09, and a low tide tonight at 5.22. Good, it's a medium tide, is at a point eight today, and a point six tomorrow. So we have a little bit of tidal movement, all right? That takes care of the weather, and we'll be back with our special guest. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Our special guest today, Lieutenant Stan Kirkland. Good to see you, Winston. How you doing, sir? I don't want to say old friend, but just we've been on each other a long time. <laughs> yep, yep. Stan, how you been doing? Oh, doing okay. Doing all right. Doing good. Just uh, a lot going on. Everybody, I tell you that it's uh, we've had so much rain, and there was a kind of a lull period. People were, uh, you know, were hard into fishing, and we had our snapper mm -hmm. season. Then the rain started in July, and it didn't seem like it would ever quit. That's right. And, uh, and, and now, you know, interest is, is really shifted. If you're at our office, there's not a, a day goes by that we don't have multiple individuals, a lot of individuals, coming by, calling, wanting hunting information. Mm -hmm. So it's really the transition has occurred. And, of course, about next March, uh, that's when yeah. people start getting the bug to go fishing, and you start seeing all the calls and and interest about uh, fishing. Yeah, we so. are creatures of habit. I mean, yes, it, sir. It just happens that way. Yeah, so, yeah uh, you're right. So what, I know uh, gator hunting is really big right now. Yeah, Winston, the, uh, right now, you know, uh, the, we're, we're, we've actually had a public waters alligator harvest. I was looking back at some uh, data uh, recently, and uh, we've, we've had a public waters alligator harvest since 1988. Mm -hmm. uh, Florida is one, in fact, there's, there's a handful of states, it used to be just Florida and Louisiana that had a, a, a recreational alligator hunting season in the, in the summer months, but, but Florida's season now, uh, it, Florida's one of a number of states now that have seasons. I think we issue the second largest number of permits. Uh, a year ago we issued, I think it was 6,900 permits this year. Uh, we issued, I think it was 56 or 5,700 permits. We had the third uh, highest demand in, t in terms of applications that we've ever had for those, app uh, for those permits. Every, uh, everybody gets a permit that's drawn, uh, gets two tags. Uh, those tags, of course, have to be immediately fixed to the alligator and, and uh, uh, for the alligator to be processed and all that. So. Uh, but, but uh, in fact, I know a couple of guys that were out last night in Gulf County. Uh, I don't think they want me to say where, but they planned on hunting from sunset until sunrise. Mm. Uh, so they were, they're, uh, they're out uh, looking for alligators in Gulf County. They killed an eight-footer the night before. They had uh, someone in the boat with them, and they, uh, they used one of their tags, which is, was legal. You, have to, you can uh, take somebody, but you have to buy a $50 agent's license, as it's called, to go with them. But um, anyway, alligator season's rocking and rolling and uh, will uh, end on November the 1st. Uh, if, if, if things hold true between our nuisance alligators, uh, between the private wetlands program, 
and the nuisance and the recreational season uh, will will have a uh, a take or harvest, however you want to say it, of roughly twenty thousand alligators. Wow! But but that's, between it all, that's a lot of gators. Yeah, and our population is really we we've got an abundance. Uh, we where our population stands at about one point three million. So uh, we got a lot of alligators. That's a small percentage when you put 20,000 against 1.3 million. Yeah, it is a small percentage. And of course, uh, one of the funny things is if you talk to people, they will pass uh, seven and eight foot gators looking for that really big gator initially. And then they realize that those big gators are not big. Uh, uh, they're not big because they're stupid. <laughs> they're, they're big. They've made it that far because they know how to watch and get away and that sort of thing. So uh, then they start, you yeah. know, they, their, their, uh, uh, their ideals for what they want in a gator start, starts coming down a little bit. Well, that big old bull gator is like a big trophy buck. They're, yeah. they're out there, but they get there because they're smart. Yep, yep. And, he, and in fact, you know, Lane Stevens, I don't know if you talked about this on your show, but uh, one of our, one of our uh, trappers recently removed a nuisance alligator at a Rocky Comfort Creek yes. in uh, Lake Talquin. And uh, Lane Stevens was a trapper, and uh, the alligator measured 14 feet long, and, and is apparently, we think, the third large, uh, longest mm -hmm. alligator ever recovered in Florida. We did show that picture here. That was a, that's an awesome, awesome gator. That was that was huge. Yeah, right. Was just, was yeah. like, that was that was uh, about two or three weeks ago. Seven yeah. weeks ago. Yeah. yeah. Somebody asked me, a reporter asked me, what would you do if you were in the water and that alligator swam up? And I said, I would think I'd crawl up on a stump if I could. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I'd want to stay in the water with that one. Yep. All right. We, I, didn't, I didn't know we got it out of Rocky Comfort Creek. Yeah, it came out. Of, yeah. Actually, he killed a, uh, a couple of alligators right there uh, behind this lady's house. This one was hanging around, and she was a little bit unnerved by yeah. it. And uh, I think Lane had killed a, a 10-footer. Uh, I believe is right before he killed this one. And my, my father uh, was a school teacher, taught Lane Stevens uh, back in the uh, 70s. And that? when I was talking to Lane about this, Lane asked me, he said, are you from Jackson County? And I said, well, yes, I am. And uh, he said, your dad, he said, was your dad a teacher? And I said, he sure was. He said, your dad taught me in the sixth grade in 1975 and 76, and I That's said, my amazing. goodness, That's amazing. Here, here I went to work. Well, ironically, Rocky Comfort Creek comes through, uh, Blair Morgan's granddad had all that land at one time, wow. and then uh, my granddad had, had the landing down below Rocky Comfort Creek, wow. so a small world, isn't right. it? Right, <laughs> it is. We're gonna, we got a good story of a big gator here. We're gonna take this break, and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. It's Lieutenant Stan Kirkland. We're telling all kinds of stories. Uh, off the air, that, that's a lot of fun too. We, we don't have time to get into those uh, right now, but we we got a picture of a. Tell us about this gator. This well, big gator story. Winston, of all the, you know, you, over the years you deal with a lot of interesting things that happen and in, uh, people and 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 things that happen with you know with wildlife, hunting, fishing trips, and that sort of thing. This is probably the most interesting and fascinating thing that's happened in in all my time with the commission. That is. Back in, uh, in August of 95, we received a call uh, from a, uh, a trapper, or uh, from a uh, hunter, a uh, fox hunter, who had lost a dog. And he said, I think I know where my, my dog is. He said, I think my dog is in the belly of an alligator. And of course, there was some skepticism, but they ended up sending a trapper. And this is what happened. This guy's name was uh, Rufus God Godwin. Rufus lived over near Jay, Florida, and he liked, he and a group of buddies loved to go to the Blackwater State Forest and run their dogs. Mm -hmm. And uh, he had a dog that, uh, he said he had been offered $5,000 for the dog. I don't know whether he had or not, but that, that's immaterial. But it was a prize dog. He would not sell this dog. Her name was Flojo. Well, Flojo disappeared one night. Uh, while, while they were uh, running, running uh, a fox in the forest. And um, he was convinced somebody stole his dog. So Rufus, and, and this dog, by the way, had a collar, a radio collar. The collar cost $150. Uh, it was a radio collar that they, could, they had a receiver, and so they could find their dogs. And he was always puzzled why he could not locate, after the night was over, why he couldn't locate this dog. So 
he, he, he and a friend decided that somebody from Pensacola had stolen his dog. Yeah. So they drove to Pensacola and they drove around and I understand they, they had the receiver, the wand out the window and they listened, they couldn't find the dog. So four or five days later, uh, Mr. Godwin went back to the area, he and his son, where they had lost the dog, where they had cast the dog, the last place he had seen it. And they got a very, very weak signal. And they started, and they were able to tell the general direction, and he and, and there was apparently a couple others with them, and they started going that direction, and they eventually came to a small creek, and they crossed this creek, they waded across the creek, and then they ended up uh, on the bank of a lake. Now this is during the night now. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine this is kind of a spooky place. And here it is and, and they and they uh, take that uh, wand uh, the, or the receiver and they're able to pick up the signal and then they realize the signals down in the water and they see bubbles and they see the mud and they back they decide, they decide that they you know that mm -hmm. Flojo's been apparently consumed by an alligator. Oh, so man. So they back out, he files a complaint with us, we send a trapper, the next day they go in there and they remove this alligator. Now this alligator is, uh, was, uh, as you can see, <laughs> uh, had not missed many meals. Good, uh, gracious. That alligator was uh, 11 feet long, and I wanna say, I, I don't remember the exact size, but I think it was between five and 600 pounds. But he had parts of, uh, he had, uh, I think it was five dog collars uh, in his stomach, and and of course uh, the remains of uh, Flojo, uh, and then there was also some other miscellaneous stuff from dog collars in there. But five identifiable collars. One guy had one collar that was in there that they could actually read was a collar uh, that where the man had lost the dog in 1981. Oh, right. Now this happened in 95, but he had lost his dog in 1981, and he had always wondered, he thought somebody stole his dog. Yeah. But uh, this alligator had set up an ambush apparently placed there, and when those, gator, when those dogs would hit the water, uh, you know, they ended up being, uh, being a meal. Well, you know, go back, it goes back to the fox. That fox was smart enough to go back and go to that same uh, pond over the years, or and, and and that gator was just sitting there in ambush, like I said. And and the interesting thing was, this happened only a couple of hundred yards from a very popular swimming location in the Blackwater, and no one had ever seen this alligator that we know of. Never been a complaint wow. about a swimmer and a alligator, anything like that. And that's how it would be so long, because right. he, he was just stayed in He had in stayed swamp, in yeah. this swampy area and doing his thing yeah. and eating what he could, but he was a very fat. I think gators are smarter than people give them yeah. credit for, you know, the, we, big, the big ones are. We got, uh, that, that of course was, uh, the AP picked that up, the Associated Press and mm -hmm. Reuters, and mm -hmm. uh, I'll tell you, we got more calls. I, mm -hmm. I did a, I had a hundred, I did 150 interviews over the next couple of days and it was all, almost equally split between people who thought that was a good thing to get the alligator out yeah. and were, you know, hated the dog got killed, and the anti-anti-anti-anti-hunters. Uh, 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 well, they wouldn't be anti-hunters. They were they were on the side of the alligator. Let me say it <laughs> like that. And they thought that we ought to have found a nice place for the alligator to live out his life and. <laughs> Anyway, so and there's more stories behind this, but anyway, that's that's it in a nutshell. But pro probably most interesting thing I've ever seen. Actually, Ripley's, believe it or not, contacted us the next day. They even I had somebody to even ask me from there to uh, if if I would uh, be a front person and purchase all this. And and I said no 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 no. Y'all call this. Y'all call Mr. G Mr. Godwin and y'all talk with him. And if he wants to give you that stuff, that's fine. But uh, anyway, yeah. well that, that's interesting. Look, yeah. we're going to take our final break. Come back with some more really good stuff from Stan. <sighs> All right, welcome back. So here with Stan. One of the things I was talking about earlier when I said talking about stuff off the air is nothing illegal or anything like that. But what what was amazing we were talking about Lake Taquin and the boat ramps were. When they let the lake down years ago, because mm -hmm. uh, we have an affinity to Lake Taquan, uh, they found that found a car uh, that had been there for years and, That's right. and had, a, had a body in it, and they were able to track it down yeah. years later. So. That was back in the 80s uh, when we had uh, 
speaking at Yale Lake Talco and they did a drawdown, as you said, and uh, the, one of the things they discovered was a car <laughs> that somebody that had been missing for 20 years and they found the remains, yeah. the skeletal remains in a car. It was sitting in 25 or 30 feet. Of, uh, well, the, the drawdown, I think, was 18 feet and they saw the, the, you know, when they got the water down that level, they could actually see the old stumps and I mean, these yeah. are enormous stumps. And what I got to talk about that was was Blair's granddaddy cutting those big old wow. original virgin timber out of there. It had to be wow. huge trees. So, wow. yeah. Yep. Well, we've we got to move on. Let's take a look at our uh, fish and game forecast for today. We're looking at uh, t exactly 10 o'clock to 12 o'clock, a uh, two hour block right there. And then tonight, uh, we're looking at 1025 to 1225 if you want to uh, head floundering, okay? Good, two good times right there. Speaking of flounder, uh, Winston, they've been catching a lot of flounder over in Chattahatchee Bay. I haven't had, uh, you know, usually we get a lot of reports back from, from here to, mm -hmm. to the east, but I've not, just not hearing that, and I haven't been able to fish a lot, uh, I haven't tried to fish during this rainy west weather, yeah. but uh, uh, hearing a lot, of, a lot of flounder being caught, particularly over the, around the mouth of the Chattahatchee River. Very good. And, uh, and there around the uh, 331 bridge. So if, you, okay. if you're anywhere close to that area and, you know, live bait's good, but, uh, you know, they make all kind of artificials now. So uh, any good, of that, that. Good tip right there. Yeah. Okay, yeah. good tip. Yeah. Okay, now you wanted to mention uh, about, uh, we're talking about bears and bears yeah. and hunters and. Well, uh, in fact, well, we're talking about we, gators, and we're talking about bears. Yeah, well, in fact, we're seeing a bear not uh, too far from your house. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, I and know I'm, your ha your wife probably won't be happy about. It. Well, <laughs> it, actually, it's not on your side of the lake, but uh, but it, yeah, uh, big yeah, bear. Your son my son, saw them. my son called me Monday morning. He's on the way to work. He said, "I just saw a huge bear." And uh, it was about 7:30, and it was. And then you said other people reported the same right. bear. Right. Right. We we've had a number of calls about a bear that's on the uh, 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 the road that goes. Uh, well, the road, uh, highway. It's Highway 2321. It's right there near the Highway Patrol uh, station there north mm -hmm. of Panama City. It's the same road our office is on. Uh, but it, it's apparently a big bear that's just feeding. Uh, he's mm -hmm. not hurting anything. He's not getting in anybody's yard. He just He's just visible. Mm -hmm. He comes out and uh, will stand uh, at the edge of the woods and let people see him. And, and I, I, we've probably had a half a dozen calls. Uh, and uh, one person has made photos and promised to send me the photos, but I haven't gotten them yet. So, and it's a big bear. Yeah, that's it's what. It's a healthy bear. Yeah, we actually caught one uh, there that was over 500 pounds uh, just north of there a few years ago. Uh, it's the largest that. bear I've ever seen. Uh, it was... Uh, it was an enormous bear. It was the bear that was going down to Mosley, uh, down in that area, going through Moat Highlands subdivision and, yeah. and mashing. The, and we caught caught that bear and uh, and moved that bear over to the national forest. We had heard he'd come down to Mosley to take it out to wear class, but we were full, so he turned around and went back. It's a shame <laughs> they didn't let him in. I know. <laughs> it, it, it's a shame. Let me mention something about bears though for just a minute. If you're if you're a hunter. And, uh, and, and of course, it's perfectly, perfectly legal to uh, feed, uh, feed deer and, and hunt in that, in, in that uh, location uh, if you maintain those feeders for six months before you hunt there. But if you feed, um, just be aware that uh, we've got a lot of bears. There, it, it's no longer an isolated incident of, of seeing a bear. Bears are, or we got a lot of bears. So if you know and you reasonably believe you have bears in your general area, um, don't put your feeders in harm's way because a bear will tear up a two or three hundred dollar feeder. Mm -hmm. He'll tear it up just that quick, and, and it and it creates a lot of anxiety and a lot of a lot of people want to get rid of the bears and all this sort of stuff. But but the the the, the bears are just doing what comes natural to them. So if you, if you uh, have the old tripod feeders and, and uh, you know, a bear can get to it, you need to modify that. You need to go to probably the L-shaped pole, the metal pole, you know, that's anchored in the ground and you, you got a pulley and a winch, you know, where you can let your feeder up and down. That's probably the safest thing to do. Uh, I talked to somebody from uh, uh, Weewahitchka the other day and they were frustrated because they're seeing so many bears uh, over in their, their area. But, but, you know, bears, bears are doing well. There's, they're a success species, a success animal in terms of coming back because the numbers, actually in the 70s that we estimated there were 
uh, only about 500 bears left in the state. And today, uh, we know the population is in excess of 3,000 animals. That was according to the last survey, and that was eight or 10, year, 10 years ago, I believe. Yeah. So we know the, the numbers are high. Uh, keep your, keep your uh, uh, food away if you've got bears coming around your yard. Don't have dog food, pet food, that kind of thing. Um, if you if had experienced problems with bears getting in your yard, you might want to consider an electric fence, something like that. But uh, uh, just just uh, just good common sense things. Yeah. Call us if there's things that uh, we can. Uh, if you've got questions, and uh, we may have some some ideas. Uh, okay. okay. Y'all getting a lot of other calls or anything else? Everybody just uh, mainly talking about getting ready for hunting. The now? hunting season, Winston. Of course, the the early duck season. Uh, you know, it opens on the twenty uh, second. I think 22nd, you've been yep. you've been talking about that, and uh, the your teal and wood duck hunters mm -hmm. that like to go, they love that opportunity. And um, of course, you have to shoot a non non toxic shot. There's mm -hmm. twenty something varieties of shot that's available now that's not lead shot. So, uh, but teal and wood duck will be our first um, uh, seasons that. that that come in and then we have the dove season that'll yeah. come in the first weekend in uh in october right. um and then also then right after that our squirrel season comes in our squirrel season comes in uh i believe it's october the 13th yeah. uh, we've moved it up a month basically uh no reason not to allow people to squirrel hunt and so that gives people a little extra time so uh you can start squirrel hunting a little early no, on private land but, yeah, on yeah, private, private land. land so, Actually, I know. turned on the TV last night, and it was somebody, uh, it was on one of the outdoor shows, they were frying up squirrels. Ah. <laughs> and uh, they were having squirrel, biscuit, and oh, gravy. Oh, man, that sounds yeah. good. Yeah. Well, Stan, I, as always, we appreciate you coming on. I always have a wealth of information. We don't, we didn't have time to get into it, but next time we're going to get into the Panthers and uh, about maybe them, you know, what the commission was talking about doing in South okay. Florida about expanding and all. So well, we're yeah. running out of time. Okay. Stan, thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Winston. All right. Folks, we appreciate you watching the show. Appreciate you supporting our sponsors. And sometime during the course of the day, you do something good for somebody. And God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.